Good afternoon. My name is Paul, Paul Sharkey. I am the training manager with Epilepsy Ireland. I've been with the association now almost 19 years. Very often, employment queries are directed to me for two reasons. The first reason, the very first employment resource pack that we produced, I was the coordinating member of the team that put that together. As a result of that, somebody thought I was an expert in employment. I am also responsible for the Training for Success program. I am the line manager for Honor and Mora, so I supervise their delivery of the program. Because of that, training and employment queries very often come to me, and community resource officers will very often come to me for consultation. First of all, I am not an employment expert. I foolishly went to a presentation many, many years ago, which was supposed to improve my understanding of employment. I realized I would have to spend the rest of the year going to such presentations because employment law is a minefield. What I'm going to do is look at very briefly the two main types of things that I would be asked to comment on, what resources are there to enable people either to access work or training, and then I want to move into the area of disclosure and my brief understanding of the legal situation, which is not so much how to tell but when to tell but I'll also give you a few tips on, I think, how. So first of all, I'm going to look at people seeking work and training and then people in employment who are either newly diagnosed or somehow the fact that they have epilepsy is discovered. Very often it could be somebody who's been seizure-free and then all of a sudden they start having seizures. So the employer now knows they have epilepsy. Or further into their career, they start to disclose to the employer. So there's two separate issues. First of all, in relation to seeking work and training, Usually, people went to FOSS, which was the National Agency for Helping People Gain Employment. That's now disbanded, and you now have SOLAS. SOLAS is an umbrella which covers all of the items here on the slide. Now, I did prepare a few handouts. Apologies, I work for a charity. My printer ran out of ink, and I couldn't get any more. There's about 35 copies over here for anybody who wants them. If anybody can't get one, if you email info at epilepsy.ie, and say, Paul, you missed me out, I'll send you on a set. But this is what SOLAS covers. Uh, funding education programs all around the country. They have an online e-courses, e so you can do free courses online. They also have a job vacancy for people to look at types of work they might be able to get. So there's a huge range, huge range of services there. Anybody comes to me looking for employment, that's where I send them. The other thing is, in Dublin we have an organization called Employability. These also exist around the country. Google is the best friend here. It's the one thing that Google is useful for. Sorry for anybody who's into Google. Uncle Google, this is when he's useful. Local area partnerships have been set up around the country, funded by the government to try and help different individuals who may be disadvantaged to try and access employment. You have the National Learning Network, who is here today. You have Citizens Information Centre, who carry local information. You also have, just to say, all of the others you may have a problem with. Training for success, you won't. Because if you disclose epilepsy to all of the others, very often people say to me, the shutters come down because they don't necessarily understand epilepsy. And they will very often say to you, go and talk to Epilepsy Ireland. First of all, we can't find you work. What we can do is inform people about epilepsy. And that's the one thing that I have been involved in, either going into employers or to job coaches, to the likes of employability, to the National Learning Work learning network to try and improve their understanding of what they're actually do, dealing with. Because epilepsy as a term to many, many people, frightens the living daylights out of them. We had a CEO who said that epilepsy is an umbrella term. It's many, many different things, but unfortunately, to the general public, epilepsy is a panic. To an employer, it's a double panic. It doesn't necessarily have to be. It's all down to how they can be explained what epilepsy is. I always say to people, I am not questioning your ability to explain, but if you want support, that's where Epilepsy Ireland can help you to put the epilepsy into a context that maybe this person you're dealing with will have a little bit better understanding of what they're dealing with so that they can then see you as a person rather than a condition. Um, we do, as I say, provide training, awareness sessions, and they can be organized through any local office that may be able to help them understand what, what you are presenting to them in epilepsy. Employers booklet has yet to be officially launched. This is the new version. This is Mark III of the original employer's resource. 
If you haven't got a copy today, try and get one before they go back to Dublin and start gathering dust. These are for employers. But if you have epilepsy and you're going to deal with an employer, you need to know the information in here as well. This is the information we reckon that employers should know. They'll only know it if they read it. So if you read it, you're one step ahead of them. And there's a particular page 11, which we analyzed when we first made the, the pack. And we came up with about seven questions that we felt in an ideal world, if someone discloses they have epilepsy, this is the type of questioning that an employer should put forward. The, this questioning will give you a structure as to what you might need to consider presenting as this is me with epilepsy. I recommend you read it. I recommend you think about it. If you need any advice on how to complete it, don't hesitate to call me. But I'm going to tell you one thing that you need to do in relation to communication, and this is going to sound daft. You've got to start learning to talk to yourself. And you've got to talk to yourself out loud. The first time you say something out loud, part of your brain is listening to what you're saying and analyzing what you're saying. You don't need that in this situation. So you learn to talk to yourself and do all the analyzing and the refining separate to when you're in that room. So you can concentrate on what it is you want to say and how you're saying it. That's the trick that every professional communicator learns. I've been involved in communication for 42 years. I spend a lot of my time talking to myself. I don't answer myself. Sometimes I don't even listen to myself, but you've got to learn to hear the sound you are making. Be, Be happy with the sound you're making. <laughs> Absolutely, 100% happy with the sound you're making so that you know that you can deal with the question and that doesn't stress you, okay? Um, in relation to the actual disclosure, the legal position is there is no legal obligation to tell anybody you have epilepsy. You only have to tell if you are directly asked, and you cannot be directly asked unless it's in the context of a medical examination. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to offend some people, and I don't mean to. Epilepsy comes under the heading of disability. It is classed as a disability. It doesn't always disable people. So I'm not trying to make any offensive comment. It comes under the heading of disability, and as such, is protected under equal equality legislation under the nine grounds. So if a woman presents for an interview, she can't be asked, is she married? If a person presents for an interview, they can't be asked, are they Hindu, Muslim, Jew, whatever? Are you straight, homosexual, whatever the word you want to use? They can't ask these questions. The same way they can't ask you, do you happen to have any kind of a disability? That's breaking the law. They, they can't. At a medical, they can. And a medical, a medical examination is, a, is there to try and assess whether you are health and safety fit for the job. So a medic can ask. The question then is, hang on, the question then is, how do I cover that I have epilepsy? So my recommendation is you're going to be asked, if you're going to go for a medical, you're going to be asked, ask your doctor. Ask your doctor for some form of documentation to support the fact that you may be seizure-free for so many years. To support the fact that this type of work, your epilepsy, your seizure type, will not have a negative impact on. It is no guarantee that you are going to get that job, but it takes some of the sting out of, oh God, you've got epilepsy, sorry, you can't do this. Epilepsy as a condition prohibits the following. Airline pilot, train driver, bus driver. The Defence Forces, which is the Army, the Navy, I think we have an aeroplane, so that would include the Air Force, the, the Gardaí, the Prison Service, Ambulance, etc., etc., they still come under the equality exemption, which means they have different rules. So they can refuse based on medical conditions. However, the guards have changed slightly, but don't ask me how. There was a lady some years ago who wanted to go for the guards and she asked me and I said, you better try, you try if you want to, but be prepared for disappointment. She actually got the job. She'd been seizure free for three to five years, it could have depended on the medical officer she dealt with, but she got the job. So things can actually change, but they are still under the exemption in the Equality Act. Everything else is supposed to be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. The question then is, should you disclose? If asked by a medic, yes. Well, then that you're lying. Never put yourself or anybody else at risk. So if you know there's a risk factor, I have a moral obligation, an ethical obligation, not to put myself at risk. 
So maybe that's not the job I should be going for. I may need to step back and consider some other career path. But as I say, always ask. It's no guarantee, but you could ask your doctor, would you be prepared to give me something to support me? Now, can I just say, I said this to a lad quite recently. If I ask my doctor, he'll tell me I'm not fit to do that particular job. So if your own medical team won't support you, how do you expect the company met the doctor? So he won't lie for you, but he may actually give you something. And many of the doctors and even urologists that I've sent people to, they understand this and where possible, they may be able to help. So don't be afraid to ask. As my mother always said, all they can do is say no. But you can't get a no unless you ask the question. Now, on a form, do you have, have you ever had, etc., etc. Et You've got two choices. You can leave it blank and maybe get the interview and then it can come up. You didn't lie. Why did you leave it blank? Because in the past, any time I filled it in, I never got the interview. I'm not saying you, Mr. Interviewer, or Mrs. Interviewer, are going to treat me the same way, but I'm just being cautious, because you can offend people for the least thing you say. Never say no, but you have the choice to say yes or leave it blank. My recommendation is if you're going to tick that box and say yes, have something from your doctor. State, I have epilepsy, but I've been seizure-free for X number of years. One of the problems that many people, and I would have been one of them, before I joined Epilepsy Ireland, because I'm a member of the general public. So once upon a time, I was thick as everybody else. You have epilepsy, or you don't have epilepsy. If I have the flu, I have a temperature. If I don't have a temperature, I haven't got the flu. You've got epilepsy, but you're not having seizures. I'm sorry, I don't know how that works. You either have it, or you haven't got it. Do you know what I mean? So to the general public, they don't always understand the connection between having a condition called epilepsy and being seizure-free. One lad, uh, himself and his mates, left school at the same time. All comparable leaving cert results. As my mother would have said, none too thick, none too bright. They were all fairly even. Within, these were the good old days. Within six months, three of these were in, in employment. Number four, never even got an interview. The difference? He had epilepsy, but he put it on his CV. Do you know the saddest part of it all? You'd be seizure free for two years. What difference would it have made? Do you know what I mean? You are legally entitled to drive a car if you're seizure free for one year. The most dangerous thing you can do in this country is drive a car. Trust me. The biggest danger is getting to work, not what you do there. So if you're seizure free for a year, use that argument. I've used it. Of course, you've got nocturnal seizures, but you better be well prepared to explain that to somebody who doesn't even understand that a person with epilepsy can be seizure-free. I'm not being cheeky, but yes, you can. If you're still having seizures, but they're only sleep seizures, you can still, if a consultant neurologist certifies, you can, you can actually drive. First of all, the obligation of the employer, if you disclose you have epilepsy, or if you, if you develop epilepsy, the obligation on the employer under law is to investigate the retention of service. In other words, how can I continue to employ you? That's a health and safety investigation. Based on that, reasonable accommodation may be made. The obligation is not on the employer to make accommodation. The obligation is to make the investigation. And that's from a solicitor who is experienced in labor law. And if you are dismissed without that investigation, that's the paper trail that can be looked for. People do all sorts of things, and this is no respect, disrespect to any employer in the room. People will do all sorts of things to get rid of what they call problems, in inverted commas. They are only allowed to act within the law. If they act outside the law, then they're liable. The thing is, what you've got to keep watching is, are they doing what they are allowed to do? If they are, I've no comeback. But if they break that, then there may be grounds. Does that make sense? So the obligation is to see how best I can keep you in service. That could mean redeployment, it could mean changing the environment, but if it's considered unreasonable, and there's always a loophole in the law. Somebody said the law is an ass, and it is, but there's always loopholes. So you're reasonable to me, sorry, no way. We've got to try and find that ground, but they have to make that investigation. In relation to equality and discrimination, this may sound like a stupid question. Can a person be dismissed if they have epilepsy? Yes, they can. Can a person be dismissed because of their epilepsy? No. 
you could have epilepsy and be rubbing me blind, I'll dismiss you. It's because you are being treated differently, because of the condition, that's where discrimination comes in. So in other words, if I catch anybody's hand in the tail, I'm sacking you, whether you're a woman, whether you're a homosexual, whether you're a Hindu, a Jew, Christian, a person with epilepsy. Equality and discrimination comes down to being treated differently because of what you might have. And that's the hardest thing to prove. So if you're ever in a situation where things might be iffy, the suggestion is keep a very close, detailed diary of everything that happens and a chain of events. What was said to you, what you were asked. Never sign anything unless you know you're signing it for your own safety. But you have to keep a paper chain as to what went on because that's what's going to be investigated. Um, I had a phone call many years ago from a young lad, well, fairly young lad, who asked me, was he being discriminated against because he was not being promoted? He had epilepsy. And my answer was that based on the fact that he had epilepsy and he was being refused promotion because of that, that was probably grounds for discrimination. I didn't say it was, I said probably, because there's two sides to every story. Because we continued to talk. And as we continued to talk, he started to say things. Well, I don't know whether there's other reasons. I said, well, what might be another reason? He said, well, I have a bit of a name, and apologies in advance. I'm a bit of a shit storer. Fair enough. Do you mind if I ask you, is there any truth in that rumor? Oh, yeah, I've caused loads of problems. Well, I said, now we have two issues. Are you being refused promotion because you have epilepsy? Possible grounds for discrimination. Are you being refused promotion because you're a shit storer? Totally different ball game. So that's where we have to be extremely careful. In one instance, there was a lady who was let go. She was told by somebody it was because of her epilepsy. Everybody else, of course, denied it. In them days, you had the Equality Authority, which led to the Equality Tribunal. She took a case against the company. It didn't come to tribunal until three years later. Okay? Now, they say they're a bit faster now. The chance to go, there was a chance for mediation, she refused. There was a chance to go to tribunal. At that stage, and this was, again, somebody stepping outside perhaps their own remit, somebody advised her, you've got about a 50-50 chance because the onus is going to be on you to prove what they said. So she could take a punt on 50-50 or she could take what the company offered because they did offer. She decided to take it. But she waited three years for that to go to tribunal. Thankfully, she'd moved on to two other jobs in between that and she thought, bugger them. I'm not going to even look at them across the tribunal room. I'll take the money and I'll run. Some people have won their cases, but the difficulty is proving that you were discriminated against. That's the hard part. There's no easy way around that. So my recommendation is you're going to disclose, as Naomi said, prepare. Use the page 11 in the employment book to think about how I can structure that. If you need assistance with it, talk to anybody in Epilepsy Ireland. They'll probably come to me and say, Paul, how are we going to do this? There's ways of putting words across. I always tell people, I don't know. But what I might argue is this over this, or that over that. And out of that, you might be able to progress the situation. The Workplace Relations Commission is where the, they are now the equality. They are the commission assigned to make sure that everybody is being treated with, uh, equally. It used to be that if you had a complaint, you would fill a form out and they would send us to the company and the company had so many days to respond and based on the response then you had either throw it out or maybe there is a case. Now apparently you use their form but you have to notify that you are taking the complaint. That's my 20 minutes I'm going to show up because I need to hand over to the other two ladies and then we have the questions as we go into the, the final part of the session. Thank you very much.